With the incentive of a future $100 million contract, the best coaches in the world, and the fact that you really are playing sports for a living, how is it still possible that we have massive busts? Highly recognized potential stars who fail to live up to their expectations in a big way. And no, I am not talking about the poor injured souls whose futures get ruined by injuries. It's not Greg Oden's fault his right leg was somehow shorter than his left and the Blazers drafted him anyway. The true biggest busts are the ones who have the God-given talents handed to them. Only they let those talents slip away for reasons that we cannot understand. Is that enough of an introduction for Marvin Bagley? Perhaps the biggest bust we have seen in recent NBA history. As the number two pick for the Kings in 2018, Bagley had a less than spectacular career and now on the Pistons in 2023. Marvin Bagley averaged 12 points, six rebounds, and 0.7 blocks per game for a 17 win team, while the rest of the 2018 draft went as follows. Number three pick, Luka Doncic, was named to his fourth all NBA team for the Mavericks. Number four pick, Jaron Jackson Jr., was selected as the NBA's defensive player of the year. And number five pick, Trey Young, averaged over 26 points and 10 assists per game for the Hawks, where Trey has also been a two time all star and made the Eastern Conference Finals. When it comes comes to being an all-time bust, the picks after you have to do big things. The picks after Marvin are on fire, and if we continue on and go even further, comparing Marvin's career so far to number 36 pick Mitchell Robinson, we can see that there is no comparison. Marvin Bagley has been a zero contributor for his teams, while Mitchell Robinson has been a beast. What makes this even worse for Marvin Bagley is that at one point in time, ESPN did label him as the best prospect they had seen in 10 10 years. This was when they were ranking him ahead of Zion Williamson. There is so much to the story of Marvin Bagley that we have to cut things down and ask and answer two questions. Why did Marvin Bagley fail in such a horrible fashion with the Kings? And also, as time passes, will Marvin Bagley be remembered as the most famous bust of a generation? So what's up, Mike here? And when it comes to draft busts, I think a hard truth needs to be established. By the time Marvin Bagley's career in Sacramento was over, it was very obvious. The Kings messed up. They could have had a lot more talent if they had drafted Luka, if they had drafted Jaron Jackson Jr., if they had drafted Trey. Moving down this draft, even Mikhail Bridges went 10, Shea Gilgis Alexander went 11, Michael Porter Jr. went 14. Having pick number two and striking out this bad? To the Kings, Marvin Bagley will always be an all-time bust, but why did the Kings feel the need to force their former number two pick off of their team in just his fourth season. But before we continue, guys, I am very excited to thank DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. Because if you may not have noticed, the National Football League is back, and I've partnered with DraftKings Sportsbook to hook you guys up. DraftKings Sportsbook is an official sports betting partner of the NFL, and again, Sundays are for football. So new customers, all you have to do is bet $5 on any wager, and you will instantly receive $200 hundred dollars in bonus bets and going even further you can use those bonus bets on a chance at same game parlays to get an even bigger payout and if sports betting is still not available in your state do not worry you can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy where you're going to have a shot to win cash prizes so don't wait any longer download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now new customers use my promo code Corzemba bet five dollars on any wager and immediately get two hundred dollars in bonus bets as promo Promo code CORZEMBA, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Thank you, DraftKings, for supporting the channel. And for now, let's get back to the video. Well, in Sacramento in 2021, Marvin Bagley was a giant headache. In January, Marvin's dad tweeted out, please trade Marvin Bagley the third ASAP. Love coach back. The next October, his management continued the war and tweeted out a statement that wildly ended with, this is a case study in mismanagement by the Kings organization. Obviously hostile words. And then finally in November, after Bagley was out of the rotation, Luke Walden went to check him back into the game and Marvin Bagley refused to play for his coach. He refused to check in. He broke one of the biggest rules of basketball. He disrespected his coach on a tremendous level because this isn't just about your coach. This is about 
about your teammates. This is about the fact that there are plenty of guys who would kill for that opportunity, who would kill for that spot on that roster. It takes quite an ego to sit back down on that bench. And also history has proven Marvin Bagley wrong. A case study in mismanagement with the Pistons, Marvin Bagley has continued to play exactly how he played. While without Marvin Bagley, the Sacramento Kings reached the 2023 NBA playoffs. On and off injuries of varying degrees have certainly played a part in Marvin Bagley's career so far. However, no team turns on a real injury riddled player. In his time in Sacramento, Marvin Bagley never improved. His per 100 possession stats from his rookie season are actually better in every single way other than assists where he is tied than his per 100 possession stats in 2023, his fifth year in the league. It is a shame that Marvin Bagley refused to work on his game because at one point in time, while it seems unbelievable now, Marvin Bagley really did have the label of generational prospect and that label was not given by fans. This scouting report increases Marvin Bagley's bust points by a tremendous amount to me as in high school, Marvin was the number one ranked player in the 2018 recruiting class ahead of Zion, Darius Garland, John Morant, everyone. With ESPN's national recruiting director since 2008, Paul Biancardi saying, this class has a once in a decade type of player in Marvin Bagley. He may be the best prospect I've seen in my time at ESPN. Yes, at this point in time, Bagley's natural talent was absolutely overpowering him on the prep circuit. ESPN's head of recruiting watched him play for years and labeled him the best prospect he had seen at his time at ESPN. That was a tremendous statement at the time and then Bagley decided to reclassify a year up which meant he jumped from the class of 2018 where he was a junior to the class of 2017 where he was now a senior in order to go play at Duke one year earlier and reach the NBA one year faster his new ranking with the players in the class of 2017 was still number one that is LeBron James level of prospect respect then in college Bagley continued his dominance averaging 21 points and 11 rebounds per game while shooting over 60% as a first team All-American. This gave the Sacramento Kings the confidence to draft Bagley ahead of Luka Doncic and the Kings ended up needing to trade Marvin Bagley away before they were able to make the playoffs in 2023. The bus points keep adding up to me. 15 plus years of not making the playoffs and you need to get your former number two pick off your roster before you can make the playoffs. What? Now injuries are a part of this again, but we just watched a true generational talent, Zion, come back from injuries and average 26 points per game immediately, while he also had the Pelicans as the top seed in the Western Conference. Without Zion, the Pelicans completely fell apart. Without Marvin Bagley, the Kings did something they hadn't done in almost two decades. Marvin has played healthy at times. We have seen what he can do. We have never seen glimpses of a generational talent. And unfortunately, we did watch as Marvin and his team openly clashed. If Marv was on the Lakers, I'm sure his dad tweeting at the organization would have been national news, but the message got lost in Sacramento. I think the problem at the end of the day with Marvin Bagley comes down to ego. And that is the ego where he believes that his style of play will work no matter what. That it's the coaches, that it's the management, that it's everyone else. We already have seen that all of Marvin Bagley's stats have declined since his rookie season. But going even further here, on the Pistons, who again won 17 games, so Marvin Bagley had every chance to prove himself. He could have started shooting one-handed threes if he wanted to. Marvin instead continued to be very bad on defense. For his career, his highest defensive box score plus minus is minus 1.2. That at this point is his reputation, just a really bad defender. But the worst part to me is that Marvin Bagley's shot distance five years into the league has gone from 8.7 feet as a rookie to now nine. This is the modern NBA. Marvin Bagley is not a rim protecting center. He sees himself as an offensive big man. We all know in the current NBA, it is not enough to just score around the basket and contribute nothing else. You need to provide versatility. You need to be able to do at least a little bit of everything. And as a number two pick, you would expect Marv to be doing, well, more than shooting 36% from mid-range as a fifth year player. As a rookie, according to basketball reference, he shot 41%. It is things like this that tell us all we need to know.
to know. The scouting report on Marvin Bagley as an NBA player has always been, he hustles, but he doesn't have the best defensive sense. He can score around the basket, but that's about it. At the end of the day, Marv can work hard. He can watch game film. He can practice his jump shot. He can do all of the things that will allow him to tap into his potential. Players such as Aaron Gordon have seen extended periods of time where they seemingly did not improve only. They were just on the wrong team. Aaron Gordon became a key starter on a championship team in Denver. But that's the thing. When Gordon was given the chance for a fresh start, he jumped at it and he never looked back. When Marvin Bagley was given the chance for a fresh start, his stats have continued to go down as we've seen both no giant leap in production or any amount of buzz produced. Bagley is playing with Cade Cunningham and Asar Thompson. If he was a fellow all-star potential player with those two, this would be the perfect trio. Instead, nobody cares about Marvin Bagley in this trio. It's not a trio, it's a duo. And that is because nobody will ever bet on the combination of injury riddled, bust-like talent and off-court headache. To me, Marvin Bagley right now is the perfect storm of busts. One, a non-serious injured draft pick who two, had the label of generational talent that three, did not come close to fulfilling his own potential while four, also was drafted right before superstars as the three picks right after Marvin Bagley could all be Hall of Famers. With that said, you know me, I'm always rooting for the side of redemption. I'm definitely rooting for Asar and Cade, so I hope we see a comeback, but for the Sacramento Kings, you can lock it in. Massive bust. It's over. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day. And cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.